So let me first ask you, and we have mm. known you for a critique of the quantity theory of money, or in other words, in other words, the traditional explanation of inflation, which states that printing money, or in other words, uh, other words, the money supply causes inflation, and this has been the narrative actually fed into. Uh, this system as well, uh, going back just two uh, years ago, that the inflation that we saw, which went up to too high as a uh, little less than 70% back in 2022, was caused entirely by the money printing saga. Can you help me understand, if not for the money printing, what in fact caused the, the red hot inflation that we saw back in 22 in Sri Lanka? It's a very important point. Um, I start by <coughs> noting that all these uh, people who were claiming that it was printing money that caused that inflation, I noticed they never provided us with any empirical data, you know, no graph, no table even to support their views. In fact, as most people who are pragmatists, people who are in industry, in business, will tell you one thing that was crucial for them putting up their prices was energy prices. So what we had in 2022-23, the war in Ukraine, triggered the spiral in energy prices. I mean, it's fuel prices, but also coal prices, gas prices, so energy prices generally. And this is a core cost of production in the whole global system. We had inflation in all countries, not just Sri Lanka. The added problem for Sri Lanka is we had a collapse of the currency. So when you add the two together, the currency depreciates by 80%. Energy prices rise by 25%. It was bound to push Sri Lankan inflation to very high levels. In fact, it was over 90% at its worst. And this is what we saw. These were the driving forces of prices. Now, I have to say that this quantity theory is not just my obsession, but has been... Uh, attacked by a lot of the research departments of the central banks of the advanced countries, having had this quantity theory guiding them for so long, somewhere about 25, 30 years ago, they started looking carefully at it and looking at the conceptual base. And they came to the conclusion that actually the conceptual base does not support the quantity theory. And this came from the central banks of the advanced countries themselves. So we're a little bit behind those central banks because we still were talking about the quantity of money causing that inflation. But I think now we have to put that discussion to rest. Okay. I get what you say, Dr. Harvard, but uh, let me also try to understand... Now, when we hit the crisis point, the Central Bank of Sri Lanka jacked up the rates by 700 basis points mm -hmm. and uh, stopped printing money. And it, in fact, caused the inflation to come down. So are you saying the money printing has no relationship whatsoever to inflation? Or creation of inflation? Yes, it's exactly what I'm saying. Actually, money stock and the cash base are consequences of what happens in the economy. They don't cause the price movement. They're consequences. And what we now understand is the money stock actually reflects the price increase. And... When the money stock rises, that is normally the deposits that people hold uh, with the commercial banks. When that rises, the commercial banks also have to get cash 
because they have a very tight cash to deposit ratio that they have to abide by. So when their deposits rise, they have to increase their demand for cash. And the central bank has to accommodate that. So you see that the cash base has risen. But the cause is not the cash rising and the deposits rising as a result of the cash base rising. It's the other way around. What happens is the prices rise, the deposits rise, and the cash base rises because the deposits rise. So the sequence is exactly the other way around. Okay, let me ask you, does that mean, or are you suggesting that tightening of the monetary policy at that time and uh, completely bringing uh, uh, the money printing uh, to a minimum level until they completely probably stopped recently had nothing, nothing to do with the dis deflation that we saw uh, from the latter part of 2022 until recently? It had little to do with it. Let me put it this way, that this was experienced in all countries in the world. So if we say that in Sri Lanka, uniquely, our controlling the money supply affected inflation, I would also have to say that our controlling the money supply in Sri Lanka affected inflation all over the world, because they had exactly the same phenomenon. Now, what we know is that prices rose and then prices fell. So oil prices soared to nearly $100 a barrel and then came back down again to $70 a barrel. Okay? And that affected everyone in the world. Now, our currency depreciated massively and then the throughput into the economy, the rise in prices, came to an end because the currency wasn't continuously depreciated. Instead, what happened is the currency even appreciated substantially afterwards. So we went from 370 to now under 300, 300. Uh, against the dollar. So this means to say that there was a huge deflationary impact on the economy. Of course, raising interest rates reinforced that. But prices would have fallen anyway. And we predicted that no matter what the government did, unless, of course, they kept depreciating the currency. Keeping aside uh, uh, the massive uh, decline in the value of the rupee or uh, letting go of the rupee back in March 2022, so you attribute that inflation completely to the supply-driven factors. Yes, yes. And what you also try to say is even if we did not raise the interest rates that much back in 2022, our inflation would anyway would have come down. Exactly, exactly. I think the central bank misunderstood the cause of inflation. They thought it was demand side. In fact, it was more or less entirely supply side. And they reacted to a demand side inflation cause when in fact it wasn't. Uh, and their reaction was raising interest rates. So in a way they inflicted pain on the economy that they shouldn't have inflicted because it was anyway going to abate. Right. So, but at the time, if you recall, people were going through many hardships. People did not have fuel, people did not have gas, people did not have the milk powder and so on and so forth. They did not have the access to the basic imported essentials. That was because Sri Lanka ran out of foreign currency. What the central bank in response did was they tightened the monetary policy as much as possible just to prevent people from further accessing these goods and services. How do you explain what they did in response to what they should have done. Well, and, they, and, and let me add to that, by raising the interest rates that much, in fact, you actually make the pain more pronounced. Right, right. I think they overdid it. Uh, there was a panic reaction, of course, because we ran out of foreign exchange. But we have to separate out two problems. 
One problem is inflation, which was fundamentally supply-driven. The other problem was a depletion of foreign reserves. Now there, there is something to be said for trying to stop people importing goods. So normally you tighten credit in order to prevent people spending on imported items. So this is a fairly normal reaction. The previous government, uh, that is the government that took that actually uh, was in power during the pandemic, what they did was they blocked imports. So I think about 700, 700 uh, imported items were suspended. Uh, suspended and we actually had uh, a reduction, not because of demand side measures, but actually because of a structural uh, policy that was implemented. And the uh, regime that came immediately after the present president, uh, Mr. Vikramasinghe, they kept a lot of those import controls in place. They didn't release really? those import controls. So I think we have to understand that that was one of the most important things to restore the foreign exchange situation. But when we talk about inflation and we talk about basic food prices rising, there's another dimension to that. And the other dimension is we haven't got our agricultural policies right for a very long time. We haven't really invested in food security. And because we haven't done that, when we had this crisis, we had nothing to fall back on. You know? And actually, we had to start importing basic food items, which were then clobbered by the currency depreciation. Had we a proper food security strategy, then we wouldn't have been so badly affected. And it's, when I say we, it's actually the poorer sections of the society that were particularly badly affected. Right. So, it is quite, according to what you say, Dr. Howard, uh, it is quite evident uh, that the inflation or the runaway uh, inflation that was created back in 2022 and uh, uh, part of 2023 was predominantly caused by the supply side factors. But large majority here in Sri Lanka <coughs> tend to believe it was because of the demand driven factors and mm. it was because of the quantity theory of money that you were talking about because the central bank went willy nilly starting from the beginning of pandemic until perhaps uh, the end of 2021 or in the lead up to the economic crisis in the early part of 2022 in expanding its balance sheet or in other words injecting liquidity into the system. Mm. Why was that misnomer so established and entrenched in this system among a large majority of the people? I think it's not only in Sri Lanka that it's entrenched, it's everywhere in the world. So whenever there's been inflation, you immediately blame the government. I mean, it's a very normal practice everywhere in the world. Uh, and it's easy for me to say inflation is due to somebody printing too much money and throwing it into the system. Okay, it's a very easy thing because the first analogy for this quantity theory in its modern form was given by Milton Friedman. He said, imagine a giant helicopter that we fill with dollars and we throw it on the population, what would the reaction of the population be? They will spend it. And because it's such a vast amount of money and a limited quantity of goods, we will get inflation. And this resonates with ordinary people, doesn't it? So if I'm taking a tuk-tuk and I ask the tuk-tuk driver what caused inflation, the tuk-tuk driver will say, oh, it's printing. it's printing too much money. But that is not the way the system works. It's not the way money comes into our system. We now understand that actually money comes into the system at the behest of commercial banks. So when commercial banks want more cash, 
the central bank accommodates that. It can't do otherwise, because otherwise interest rates will go haywire. And that is the system that we have. And money is not just catapulted into the economy by the central bank willy-nilly. Okay? It comes in at the behest of the commercial banks. So if anyone is responsible for putting too much money into the system, it's actually the commercial banks. But can that cause inflation? Oh, in other words, let me add to that <coughs> question. Can the unchecked printing of money at least cause a bit of inflation if that printed money stock does not end up improving or enhancing the productivity of the economy? No. Again, the sequence that we now understand is firstly, aggregate demand rises, okay, aggregate expenditure rises. That causes the money stock to rise. That is what we call M2. And when that rises, the cash base rises. In other words, more money is printed. So the cause is not the printing of money. It's a consequence of prices rising or output rising or both of them. You see? But we have had generations of people who have been taught the opposite, that printing of money leads to money stock rising, leads to inflation. So naturally, when there is inflation, people immediately look to printing of money as the culprit, mm -hmm. which is not correct. So what you basically, I'm trying to understand here what you say. So basically what happens is when the, <coughs> when the money supply goes up, it has to commensurate with the in, increase in the productive capacity of the economy. And the prices. Same, and and the, the prices. prices. Right. So then it yeah. balances it out, balances out, and then it won't, uh, it is unlikely to cause uh, higher prices. Yeah. And just a qualification there is the, then people ask me, so does that mean that the government is exonerated from having any bearing on inflation? Answer is no. If the government runs a massive budget deficit, then it can induce inflation because basically it's creating demand without commensurate increase in output. Okay? But notice I have not said anything about the quantity of money. I've just said the government increases demand. Now there, that demand could be financed by the central bank printing money or it may not be financed by the central bank printing money. The government might issue debt, which is then bought by the private sector. But both of them could contribute to inflation. You notice it's not the printing of money. It's actually the most important thing. It is the government running a huge budget deficit. That can be inflationary. Right. Thank you very much, Dr. Howard, because I had to purposely spend a bit more time in this discussion on this topic because there's a huge misnomer in Sri Lanka and perhaps around the world as well. What really is the driving force behind the inflation and in particularly what drove Sri Lanka's inflation back in 2022?